Hi everyone, my name is Carrie and I am a lead keeper here in our ungulate section of the zoo and today I'll be bringing the zoo to you with our camel group. Um, so as you can see, winter has finally decided to hit here in Chicagoland, uh, but these camels are more than well suited for um, our Chicago winter weather. These camels are um, by nature from um, the steppes of China and Mongolia. So the weather that they experience in their native habitats is far more extreme than what we experience here in Chicagoland. Um, so their winters tend to be much colder than ours. And then conversely, their summers are much hotter than ours. Um, the thing that is a little bit different about our environment versus their native habitats is that um, we experience a lot more snow than they do. Um, so they are a desert animal, so they don't get much pre pre precipitation uh, where they're from. Um, but despite that, these girls are very capable of handling the snow that we're experiencing here. Um, you can see they develop a really thick, shaggy winter coat um, to keep themselves warm in the winter time. Um, and if, if they would show off for us, um, you could see that the hair on their necks and the fronts of their legs is much thicker than other parts of their body. Um, and that's just to help protect them from, um, you know, some sharp wind gusts that thick is, or that fur is very thick to help keep them warm. So they would sort of face into a breeze because the thickest parts of their hair are exposed in that direction. Yeah. So um, when they really experience winter storms, what they'll do is sort of hunker down and um, huddle up together in a big group to keep warm and they'll sort of bury themselves into the sand if they can find it um, and just sort of shield themselves against those high winds and cold weather conditions. Um, something else that they're really well adapted to for um, winter weather conditions is that they will eat just about any type of forage that they can find. So right now they're enjoying some dry grass hay um, and that's something that we provide for them here at the zoo, but in their native habitats, they would um, eat any type of um, grass or herbs or bushes that they could find, um, branches from trees. Um, and if you'll notice, we have a couple um, branches around their enclosure. And even in the winter time, when there's no leaves on those branches, they still will enjoy chewing the bark off of those and any of the um, smaller, more pliable sticks that they can chew through, they'll eat those as well. So they're really well adapted to um, harsh conditions where there's not a lot available. Um, something that is a big misconception when people talk about camels is um, the idea that they store water in their humps. That is not true. Um, what's in those humps is fat stores and um, that too helps them survive through harsh winter conditions. Um, they are very well adapted to living without water for far longer than people are. Um, so depending on the conditions, they can go anywhere from five up to 10 days without access to water. Um, so they will get some moisture through the foods that they're eating, um, but that's more true during the winter growing season or the summer growing season than it is in like you know, sort of the winter dry seasons. Um, so something that makes them so well adapted to going without water is that their red blood cells are shaped differently than our red blood cells. Um, so our red, blo red blood cells are sort of a disc shape, um, whereas camels have an elliptical shaped red blood cell. And the shape of that cell makes it um, stronger to differences in water pressure, essentially. Um, so where if we would take on a big, huge influx of water, our red blood cells would actually burst because it would take on more of the water and um, that shape is not conducive to those sudden changes. Whereas the shape of the camel red blood cell makes it just more resilient to those changes. So when they have access to water, they can drink and drink and drink and drink and not suffer those ill effects that we would experience. I had no idea. It's true. I mean, I knew some animals had that. I didn't realize camels did. That's yeah. really cool. Uh, do you want any questions? Sure. 
When do they get their coats trimmed? They, we don't trim their coats necessarily. Um, they do, by nature, shed their fur in the spring and summer. Um, usually by June, they're really actively shedding those coats. Um, and it seems to us that it's um, sweating that triggers that hair to release and let go. Um, so we do help them shed their fur in the summertime. Um, and we have some special grooming tools um, called a shedding rake or yeah, a shedding rake. And essentially we just help comb that off of them. Um, there are some areas that tend to get a little bit more tangled and matted than others. Um, and so if those really are not letting go with the more tractable animals, we can help shave that off of them. Um, but like Ray Ray would not tolerate that. She, <laughs> she doesn't love to be touched, let alone um, stand still for a razor, so, um, or clippers rather. So, so it's something that we can do for Christina, but not necessarily for Ray Ray, but eventually that hair comes off on its own. So does it come off in big clumps like the bison hair does? Sometimes, yeah. Um, it really depends on like sort of where their bodies are at in the shedding process. Um, so sometimes we can go out with that shedding rake and get, you know, like, 10, 15 pounds of hair off. Um, but you know, other times the hair isn't really ready to let go. Um, and so we just get like smaller little tufts out at that point. Mm -hmm. Um, I know in the summer, some people have commented that they look like they're bald. Um, but that's, that's totally natural. That it is totally natural. Wild, so. Yeah. Okay. So as that thick winter coat comes off, um, almost immediately that new undercoat starts growing in. Now, how are their feet adapted for snow and sand? Um, so I don't know how well you guys can see their feet from this angle, but their foot is very wide um, and sort of plate shaped. So um, they, the weight that they bear is spread out over um, sort of, you know, that wide surface. So it helps keep them from like sinking in to okay. the sand and the um, snow, sort of like a snowshoe. It's very similar. Cool. Um, what about their tongues? What, do they have special adaptations on their tongues for all the, the harsh stuff that they eat? Um, not necessarily. They do have some, um, I mean, the skin in their mouth is sort of unusually thick compared okay. to like people. Um, so they can tolerate chewing through, you know, thorny pokey uh, materials, but um, yeah, I guess I was thinking of like giraffes if it was similar to giraffe tongues. Yeah, no, their their tongue is not nearly as um, uh, functional okay. as a giraffe tongue. Um, you know, whereas giraffes can stick out their tongues and grasp things with their tongues, camels don't have that ability. Mm -hmm. Now, you did say that we have um, some brows over here. Is that from the, the ComEd Brows program? That is, yeah. Um, so even in the wintertime, ComEd trims um, trees from power lines and um, any browse species that is safe for animals to get they'll deliver here to the zoo and um, we can let animals like camels and giraffe and rhinos um, all chew on those branches and they'll strip all that bark off and that um, not only provides you know more natural forage for them but it also helps um, keep their teeth healthy and their guts healthy and that sort of thing uh, so that's why you leave them up even when there's no leaves because it helps the camel's teeth yep yeah, and camels have a real behavioral need to chew. Um, and so that's just another thing that we can provide for them to just meet their natural uh, behavioral needs. Cool. Um, when they're in the wild in their native habitat and they shed off all that hair, is, does, anything, does anything use it? Uh, yeah, I mean, native animals will use it for um, nesting materials and that sort of thing. Um, and so that's an interesting point that you bring up uh, because this this species of camel is actually a domesticated animal. Um, they've now determined that um, domesticated Bactrian camels are genetically distinct from wild Bactrian camels. Wow. So the camels that we have here are domesticated animals. So they're um, they're used as a beast of burden um, in their um, habitats in uh, China and Mongolia. So people do use their hair similar to like sheep's wool that we would use here. Um, and 
the the wool that comes from um, yearling camels is very very soft and fine and um, so that's like a special uh, material for people to use as like a high value okay. um, item how can you tell ray ray and christina apart that's a great question and it it's sometimes even hard for us <laughs> um, they they are related ray ray is christina's granddaughter and so they do look very similar um, but ray ray's humps are much closer together than christina's humps are so um, if you see a camel and it looks like their humps are touching that's ray ray but if there's a space in between the humps that's christina okay so it looks like christina's on the left correct yeah okay um so we did just see ray ray uh chewing quite a bit are they ruminators they are so they're they're a little bit different than say a cow um i think it's fairly common knowledge that cows have like this four chambered stomach mm -hmm. um so that's that's typical of what a ruminant gut would look like there's like these four different chambers within their um, gi tract but um Camels only have three of those chambers, so um, they are a bit unique in the animal world in that um, they uh, just have that different system. So we see that Christina is over there working on that branch. Yeah. What other things do they eat? Um, really, like I said, anything that they can find, they um, will eat. Um, although, that being said, they are herbivores. They don't eat meat or um, like animal products. So they are strict herbivores, but within that realm, they'll eat whatever they can find. Um, our camels here at the zoo tend to be somewhat picky. They don't like uh, novel foods. They become really suspicious of novel foods, <laughs> um, usually because we're trying to hide some sort of medication or something in them. Oh, um, so, so they are so, somewhat suspicious when we introduce new foods to them. Um, but carrots are one of their favorite treats um, and sweet potatoes and apples and um, lettuce. They really enjoy all of those things. <laughs> would you say carrots are their favorite? I would say so, yeah. Do they, um, do they have a strict feeding schedule or do they just kind of browse all day? Yeah, so th they're fed hay at least twice a day to help um, sort of space out the bulk of their diet. Um, and the camels are sort of funny in that some days they'll polish up their hay right away and other days they just won't eat much hay at all. Um, so we just assume that they're listening to what their bodies are telling them and, you know, just those changes are based off of their needs. Um, so, so their hay is split into two feedings and then also their grain is split into two feedings. They get, um, a grain product here at the zoo that is similar to, um, like cereal for people. So it provides sort of all the you know, vitamins and minerals and other micronutrients that they need to be healthy, mm -hmm. um, as well as, you know, some starch and carbohydrates and stuff like that. Do we have any treats for them here today? We do. We do have some carrots and sweet potatoes here. Um, so I'm going to toss them in for them and see if they'll come over. <laughs> it's like, I guess so. <laughs> Ray, Ray is interested right away. How quickly can camels move? Um, Do you they know, run? They can run. They, they look very silly when they run because their head kind of bobs up and down. Um, but I actually don't know off the top of my head like how many miles per hour. Because I know I've tried to capture them running a couple times, but it seems like they just have really short bursts. Yeah. Um, camels are very good at conserving energy because they live in a desert situation. And so they are not predisposed to using energy that they don't have to use. <laughs> so um, given the choice, they'll be pretty sedentary. Do they make any noises? They do. Um, when they're unhappy, they'll bark. Um, and that's a really good warning to us keepers that we're doing something that they find displeasing. Um, so typically 
they'll bark first and then if we're still doing something that they don't enjoy they'll start spitting camels do spit um, oh my gosh just like llamas just like llamas and it's not just saliva that they spit they actually bring up rumen content oh, so it's it's yeah. really unpleasant um so we appreciate that they bark first and let us know <laughs> <laughs> that that's coming well i have to say i've never heard them bark so uh, that's that seems like a good thing then. yeah they do it more to each other honestly okay. um, like if they're squabbling over um, some tree items they'll bark at each other <laughs> so now that they're up a little bit closer you can see their cute little camel ears yeah and that's <laughs> um, their ears are heavily covered in fur as well so they're well protected against the cold I think they're so cute do they have fuzzy noses uh, they do, yeah, and fuzzy lips. So if you can see, they actually have a like a cleft lip, um, and so that too is a way that they can oh, conserve water, yeah. because um, as they exhale, they have like that long, big snout, um, and as they exhale, the um, the moisture from their breath condenses in that nasal passage, and um, then runs down that cleft back into their mouth so they lose less you know water through their expiration uh -huh. now they do sort of look kind of similar with their necks and their heads to llamas and alpacas is there any kind of relation uh yes those are all in the camelid family um so bactrian camels and um dromedary camels are sort of <clears throat> excuse me, are part of the Camellus genus. Um, but then there's um, a number of species in South America that are part of that same family, but, you know, have developed, obviously, um, a different line through mm -hmm. evolution. And they have similar feet, too, but the llamas don't have, obviously, don't have humps. Yeah, that's correct. But, but they, llamas also have that three-chambered stomach that oh, I was talking cool. about. Oh, What's that one landed right in her hat. <laughs> <laughs> Christine will get it later. <laughs> Do you have any um, favorite kind of like obscure camel facts? Um, oh, I should have thought about that ahead of time. Yeah, I just thought about it now. Sorry. Um, or what's your favorite thing about camels? Well, from a keeper perspective, my favorite thing about camels is that they really make you work to develop a relationship with them. <laughs> um, they really push people and try to like push their boundaries like a toddler, you know, like they'll okay. try and see what they can get away with. Um, but then once you establish a relationship with them, they're pretty solid. It's not something that you have to reinforce over and over and over and over again. So um, Christina came to us with a lot of um, training already but um she still made us work really hard to get that relationship established where she would do all those behaviors for mm -hmm. us speaking of training what types of things do you train camels to do well christina is um, trained to wear a halter and walk next to us um, and there is a lot of benefit to that because um, we can exercise her that way uh, these camels are really predisposed to arthritis like I was mentioning that they are sedentary given the choice so the more that we can get them up and active the better it is for them yeah. um, but currently one thing that we're working on is um, we're training Ray Ray to put her head on um, a radiograph platform so that we can get some dental radiographs of her teeth um, so the way that works and I was hoping to show you guys but we just didn't have the right people here today um, the way that works is that she reaches her head across um, a platform and that platform is attached to the radiograph plate and um, so then we're able to position her in such a way that um, we can sort of take that image through her skull wow. and uh, get those images of her teeth. Oh, that's really cool. And so that's all and voluntary. That's she, she chooses to come over and participate in that. Gosh, I just love the camels so much and I feel like they don't get enough appreciation. <laughs> I really love them too. Um, we always joke that like we have tornado animals and those are animals that like if a tornado was coming and you could only save one, who would it be? 
Um, <laughs> and Christina is my tornado animal for sure. Oh, she's such a sweetheart. <laughs> yeah. All right. So thank you guys so much for joining us for today's Bringing the Zoo to You. As always, we really appreciate all of your support.